I've been working on a new commission from the Bowes Museum. I went across to Barney Castle. So I've got this really, really interesting project. I'm looking at uh, one of our Queen's ancestors. Mary Eleanor Bowes unfortunately was a victim of her sex. A woman was just viewed as a husband's property. The things that people were to inherit quite often went straight down the male line. Unfortunately, like a lot of women at that time, um, even though she was educated, it was very difficult for her to hold on to her vast wealth that her father had left her as her inheritance. Obviously, she became an attractive bachelorette. Basically, men who were in debt wanted to marry her in order to get their hands on the fortune. Luckily, her dad was, you know, he was an astute man, and he, even though he died when she was only 11, he had actually stipulated a prenuptial agree agreement that would hopefully impede somebody else trying to take her fortune Gibside and the coal mines away from her. Built into this prenup there was a clause that said any husband that she took would have to take her name. She married first the ninth Earl of Strathmore and his name was John Lyon. They had five children together in the first six years of marriage. He was 18 years older than her but he agreed to the prenup. They lived a really amazing crazy lifestyle style, spending all of our money like it was going out of fashion. And he unfortunately contracted tuberculosis and died. And just before he passed away, he was very unwell and un unable to perform his husbandly duties for his wife, which in turn then led Mary Ellen Abuse to seek satisfaction from other places. Uh, she met up with her lover. She ended up getting pregnant by him and she took different remedies in order to facilitate an abortion of the child. This happened four times and on the fourth time the baby survived, so she was in a little bit of a pickle. She had been going to marry her lover, however, he wasn't of the similar social standing that she was. So a man called Andrew Stoney Robinson basically he would write to the local newspaper and slander her. But then afterwards he would write to the newspaper as himself in her defence. So he was playing both sides you know, causing her reputation to be dragged into disrepute by these anonymous letters and then feigning to be her hero by also defending her against the um, the offensive materials that he was spreading. In the end, he called out the newspaper editor and asked him for a duel. The, the duel didn't happen and Mary Ellen Abose somehow f was told that Andrew Stoney Robinson was on his deathbed and he kind of hammed it up. He's like, oh, I've defended you in the newspaper. Um, I've also then gone to have a duel over your honour. So she was duped into thinking that this guy was like on his deathbed, you know, naivety, being in an awful predicament, being pregnant with a bastard child. Whatever our reason, she actually married the loser. He continued his, his propaganda campaign against her and also was horrifically abusive to her in private. He would burn her, beat her. She was basically locked away from the rest of the world for quite a few years. One of her maids had said to her, you know, you can't carry on like this. She was just being subject to domestic rape, violence, coercion. He was attempting to take her mass fortune as his right because she was his property, being his wife. She was one of the first women after she had escaped from Andrew Stoney Robinson to take him to court over the abuse and a petition for divorce. So she's quite important in the sense that she was the first woman to do that. She also wrote a book which was called The Confessions of the Countess of Strathmore. This book was actually written while she was being threatened by Stoney Robinson. She was forced to write a book under duress. She didn't lose her fortune, she managed to keep it, but unfortunately her reputation was absolutely dragged through the mud. And as a consequence of that, she's lost footing in the eyes of history. Rather than remember fantastic contributions to social culture at the time, and also the scientific culture of the time, as she was funding expeditions by the likes of Joseph Banks, the famous botanist, she also carried on the passion of her father that he had for creating these beautiful landscape gardens through horticulture and botany. 